trying to hoard some kielbasa around here. That's something about like kielbasa. How you say it? Kielbasa. How you say it? Kielbasa. It's like Mufasa. <laughs> kielbasa. <laughs> Stop. I'm waiting. Uh-huh. Time is a ticking. <laughs> If you were like us, you always have some of this on hand. We've either got some in the fridge or the freezer and it's just great for quick meals. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. I love to just use kielbasa or chicken sausage in place of chicken or some other type of meat when I'm in a hurry. It's already cooked. You just need to saute it, warm it up and you're ready to go. This first recipe we're making is called cheesy kielbasa rice and broccoli skillet. We don't have a lot of chopping to do, but we're gonna dice this red bell pepper as well as this small onion. Today, just to make things easier and more uniform, I'm gonna use my little chopper here. So now Steven is just gonna cut up our broccoli for us. We want bite-sized pieces. You want about two cups of broccoli. I don't know that we quite have two cups, but it's gonna be okay. So Steven is slicing this on the diagonal into little bite-sized pieces. We get fancy on the diag. On the diag. I'm doing a little geometry here. You didn't know, <laughs> you didn't know geometry class was gonna come into, into play here with these chopping up this kielbasa. While he is slicing that up, I'm gonna start heating up this large skillet. You want a large skillet that has a lid. And we're gonna heat it to about medium high. We don't need a lot of olive oil, but I'm just gonna add just a little bit to the pan. And we're gonna saute our kielbasa here in just a second. Take that over to the Let's stove. Do this. come on. Okay. So we just need like three or four minutes. You just wanna brown it up just a little bit. And then we're gonna be removing it out of the pan before we move on. Okay, we're getting some good color on these. So it's time to turn them. They've been in for maybe two minutes. We'll just leave them in for another minute or two and then we'll take them out. Okay, if you're new here, this is Commentator. He reads the comments from the last video. So the last video that you guys saw was our best of, and there were some great comments on that video. This is from Brenda Teague. She said, I get tickled when Steven does his announcer voice. I expect to hear it followed with, are you ready to rumble? He has the best announcer voice. I love it when he does his announcer voice. It always tickles people when they don't know that he does it and he just breaks out with it. Everybody's like. And I just started doing it as a joke. Yeah, he did. When I was in the military. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody requests his, uh, his announcer voice. So I just thought that was funny because he has said, are you ready to rumble? a gazillion times. <laughs> Look at the color on those. Oh yeah. Smells really good. Yum. Back to our hot skillet. He's adding a little bit more oil and we are going to saute our onion and our bell pepper. If you have some brown bits on the bottom, you wanna scrape that up right now because it's gonna add in some flavor. We don't have a lot of brown bits because we have the caraway pans and they're so nonstick that we don't have that. But if you do, that's gonna work in your favor for this recipe. Our onion has gotten pretty soft. You need about two cloves of minced garlic, but you just, you let the garlic tell you how much needs to go in there. It will tell you. And then we need some salt and pepper. Just gonna let that cook for about 30 seconds or so before we add in our rice. We have one cup of white rice that we already rinsed. So just add that into your skillet. You gotta sweet talk it out of there a little bit. Huh? Well, it's probably still a little bit wet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So just stir all of that to combine and we're gonna let that cook for two minutes. Now we're gonna add in two cups of chicken broth and we're gonna bring that to a bowl. Okay, this has come up to a bowl. So we're gonna reduce the heat to low and we're gonna cover it. And we're gonna let it cook for 15 minutes. It has been... Whoa. A mess. A little aggressive on that. You got a little excited. We got water everywhere, y'all. It's smelling good in here now. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. You don't want to disturb the rice. Don't stir the rice. You're going to throw your broccoli on top, and we're going to put the lid back on and let it cook for another five to seven minutes until our rice is completely done, and that's just going to steam our broccoli. Oh, my. You can't take me nowhere. No, you can't. Okay, let's do six minutes. Okay, it's been about six minutes. Got some pretty color here. And now we're gonna add in our kielbasa. I've got two cups of shredded cheese here. We're gonna add in about half of it now and stir it in. And this, because it didn't have a whole lot of salt and pepper or you know, a lot, a lot of seasonings, we are gonna do a little taste test here in just a minute just to make sure 
that's got the seasonings are, are on point. So we'll test that. Okay, so Steven did a little taste test and he said it is good as is. So we're gonna top it with the rest of this cheese and put the lid on it and let the cheese melt. And we'll be right back here in just a second. Oh man, that cheesy flavor mm -hmm. with the sausage, the smokiness of that sausage there. Yeah. A little bit of that garlic flavor in there as well. Love the cheese, the broccoli. Wonderful pairings in here. And I'm surprised mm. that all we had to do was add a little salt and pepper. Oh yeah. And it has that much flavor, but the kielbasa has a mm. lot of flavor in and of itself. Rice is cooked perfectly. Okay. Well, I'm really gonna I'm gonna dig in. This is such a pretty plate. Mm. It feels light and fresh, mm. even though there's rice in there. It is delicious, y'all. Mm. Y'all gotta make this one. I can see this being on rotation in our house. This was so simple. Oh yeah. This little girl loves the porch. She has quite the setup, y'all. Have I showed you? Let me show you. And she's eating cheese off of his finger. <laughs> we just recently got this rug and it really ties down this space over here, anchors down the like living room space. The rug came from Sam's, all of this came from Sam's. But this is her little mat with her water bowl. She has got quite the setup. She likes to be over here in the sun. Did you get enough cheese? She said, nope. <laughs> Tonight, this is another one pot meal and it's gonna be a pasta dish. This is one pan creamy sausage pasta. To get started, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up this um, beef smoked sausage. You can use whichever one you like. I just grabbed this one for a little something different tonight. We've got all of that sliced up. Now let's take this over to the stove. Okay, so we've got an onion here and a green bell pepper. I'm gonna dice those using my handy dandy dicer over here. So we switched places. Steven is just chopping up a little parsley and we're also going to be adding in a chopped up jalapeno. You can leave this out if you don't like heat in yours. That is totally optional. We're gonna start this one out just like we did the last one that we made and we're just going to brown up our sausage here in this really large skillet. I do have just a little bit of olive oil in there and this will probably take four or five minutes just to get some good color. Great, you want some cheese on the girl? Okay. Okay, so we're removing this to a paper towel lined plate. We're gonna leave the oil behind because we're gonna be cooking our, or sauteing our onions and bell pepper in there. Oh man, look at that color on these guys. Yeah, it looks good. It smells good too. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna saute this for four or five minutes until everything gets really soft. Steven's just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this while it's cooking. This last minute or so, we're gonna throw in a little bit of minced garlic and let it cook for about a minute. You want about three cloves of garlic or however much your heart desires. We'll let that cook for another 30 seconds to a minute. The recipe calls for four small tomatoes diced. We're just gonna go with a can of fire roasted tomatoes. So there's a lot of juice in this, but the juice has a lot of flavor, so we're gonna leave it in there. But you can go with fresh tomatoes if you prefer. We're also gonna add in two cups of chicken broth. You can go ahead and add in the jalapenos at this point. Now we're gonna add in about a half a cup of heavy cream. We're just gonna eyeball it. Next, we're gonna add in about three and a half cups of shell pasta. I'm using medium shells. We're going for a little bath. <laughs> Stir those in. And we're gonna bring this up to a bowl. Actually, before we bring it up to a bowl, we need to add the kielbasa back in. It's gonna be rather full. So we just turned it up to higher heat. We're gonna cover it and bring it up to a bowl. So now that it has come to a bowl, we're gonna reduce the heat to about medium low. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 15 minutes. We are gonna come in here and stir it occasionally. We got Forrest Company says, Mandy, I have owned an instant. She said Insta. Haha, -ha, it's an Insta, see? It's an instant, but go right ahead. We have Mandy, this I've argument owned an this Insta all the time. For about two to three years now. See, I'm team Insta. Um, okay. It, it's instant. We're but team Insta. I get it. I get, get it. I get, get it. You. She's on an Instant Pot for two to three years now and have never used it. What? Your straight out of heaven casserole is motivating me to finally use it. Use it. Do the test it tells you to do. It tells you to like just basically boil water, just to heat water the first time. I had to get over my fear of the Instant Pot. You remember the absolute fear? I was oh, yeah. scared to death of it. Oh 
I feel like I'm about to go into battle. Like I need to pull my hair back. I need to put a helmet on. I need bodyguard. Bodyguard? Body armor. I could use a bodyguard. Baby! Y'all, I'm brand new to the Instant Pot. I'm scared to death. I did my water test earlier today. It was comical, but I survived. Y'all see I am fully prepared over here. I can do this. Three, two, one. Why won't I do it? There. <laughs> But now that I'm used to it. The whole pressure cooker fear, fears yeah, you know, and all that stuff. You just, the biggest thing is you want to make sure that it's in an area when you release the steam, it's not going to get all over your cabinets or anything. And once you um, click for it to come to pressure, don't move it at all. Leave it be. Don't touch it. Just because if you move it, it could, I don't know that it could explode. I don't know. But it says not to move it once you like hit it for it to come up to pressure. So get it in a, a good spot away from your cabinets and you'll be good to go. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. We stirred it occasionally. The pasta is done. So now what we're gonna do is turn the heat off and we're gonna remove it from the heat and add in a cup of cheddar cheese that's shredded. We're gonna stir all of this in as well as our chopped parsley. And then we're gonna let it sit for like five minutes so it'll thicken up a little bit and that cheese will melt. First of all, it passes the eye test. We got some nice. creaminess in there. You can see the bits of veggies, the onions, and it just looks really good. You can see the parsley too, it looks good. Yeah. Yes. Does it have a little bit of heat to it? Got some heat to it. Good. It's got that cheesy, creamy yeah. sauce that's in there. That is amazing. Okay, I gotta do it again, y'all. Really this good. Smells Love so this. Good. Oh man, the smoky flavors of the sausage yeah. with this. Yeah. Wow. This is so creamy and good. And y'all, just a little bit of salt and pepper. That's the thing that's astounded me on the last two that we've made. Oh, All yeah. we've added is just a tiny bit of salt and pepper. That's right. It's just got so much flavor in the um, the sausage. And then all the other things, you know, there's of course um, in the chicken broth and in the tomatoes, the diced tomatoes, the cheese, there's some salt in those things too, but that's all it needed. It's so amazing. Man, this is really good. Very rich in flavor. Mm -hmm. Does not disappoint. And if you were like, oh, I don't know if I want to add the jalapeno or not, it's not super spicy. It's yeah. just got a little bit of spice to it, so just a heads up. And we did not seed our jalapeno. We left the seeds in and it's just fine. But what did you say just a second ago? You might want to look for this one on a, a best of video. Yeah. Definitely need to make this one. Tonight's Subby Supper is called Kiabasa. I always feel like I'm saying that wrong. Tell me how you say it below. I've heard it a lot of different ways. I'm going to say kielbasa skillet stew. We're going to serve it over rice and I'm also going to make Stephen's grandmother's recipe of cornbread. But the first thing we're going to do is cook up some bacon and then we're going to leave the fat in the pan and then cook up some other stuff in that, which means it's going to have a ton of flavor. While our bacon is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and slice this really thinly. Now that our bacon is cooked, we're just gonna pull it to the side. We are gonna leave the drippings in there and we're gonna cook our sausage and our uh, onion in there now. I've got one medium sized onion that's been diced and we're adding in our kielbasa sausage. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. The recipe she sent doesn't call for it, but we love garlic in this house, so. So basically we are just cooking this for a couple of minutes just until these onions are really soft and translucent and they are getting there quickly. I've got a small green bell pepper that's been chopped and two carrots that have been thinly sliced. The recipe calls for a four ounce can of diced green chilies. I had a seven ounce can so we're just going to use that. Two cans of great northern beans that have not been drained. half a teaspoon of ground thyme. You could just use dried thyme, but we didn't have any on hand. A half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and then about an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. You wanna bring this up to a boil. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. Now that it's come up to a boil, I'm gonna stir it. I'm gonna put a lid on it, and we're gonna reduce the heat to about medium low. 
We're gonna let this simmer for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna come over here and stir it occasionally. I'm gonna prep our cast iron skillet for our cornbread. I'm gonna get some Crisco and rub it all around. This is Stephen's grandmother's cast iron skillet. She's passed away. If you've been with me for a while, then you may have seen the video where I shared all about this. I will link that below. It's a neat story of how we got it, but we use this every time we make cornbread and it works out perfectly every single time. I've got two and a half cups of self-rising corn meal. I'm adding a half a cup of Crisco. And I'm adding in two eggs. I'm gonna use this pastry cutter and just mix all of this together by going down in a circular motion. We're gonna do this until it resembles coarse crumbs. I'm gonna add in two cups of buttermilk. I'm gonna stir that with a fork just until it's blended and then it goes directly into the cast iron skillet. Okay, this is gonna go in an oven. I've got the oven preheated to 425 and it's gonna bake for 25 to 35 minutes. Our sweet spot always seems to be exactly 30 minutes. Steven cut up this bacon for us, so I'm gonna add this on top because everything's better with bacon. Right, Cole? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We had some leftover cilantro and green onions from last night's dinner, so why not, right? This looks really good. It does. My kind of meal is kind of like a, it's a kind of like a chili. That's really good. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, the bacon and then the sauce is really, really good. It's not too watery. It's, um, it's rich. It's got, you know, you can definitely taste all the seasonings that you put in there. And the veggies are really soft. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jessica, for sending this in. This is so easy. I love how easy this was mm -hmm. and how tasty it is. Linda Switzer says, I absolutely love how Mr. Commentator is so supportive, supported, supportive of you. I can't speak. <laughs> love your love. Y'all crack me up. So thank you very much. I am appreciative of how supportive he is too. I've had a channel for five years now. I would not have had a channel for five years if this guy was not so supportive. It's really hard to do YouTube and to put your life out there, but if he was against it or really just didn't want to have anything to do with it, I think it would just be a lot harder. We, I mean, we've really found that we enjoy doing this yeah, together. It's we, fun. we have fun. Yeah. I mean, there's moments of we get a little tense in the kitchen sometimes. Yeah. There's yeah. moments of that. Just eensy beensy beensy bit. <laughs> but overall, we really enjoy. He gets off work, he comes in there and he helps. Either he's worked late and he just comes and does the taste test or he's able to actually help me cook. And that just, it's great a great time for us to spend together. It but really is. I will tell you, it's been, I keep, I've been talking about that recently of just getting back into the kitchen and doing some more of the filming and stuff. I really just like being a part of the whole cooking process. He loves you know? to cook, y'all. If you don't know that. Way that way I can taste it. Be a part of the whole design process or whatever. Yeah. It's a fun thing for us to do together. We enjoy it. And we're so glad that y'all enjoy seeing us together because this is just us. You can ask anybody who knows us in, in real life. This is just us. This is how we operate yeah. together. And I love that it comes across on camera. 
and that you guys enjoy it.